always, if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video at this point and try the question on your own before listening on. At first glance, this problem looks like it might be a projectile motion question, but the problem with using that approach is that we don't know the angle at which the motorcyclist is launched into the air. And so without that angle, we would not be able to use kinematics and projectile motion to solve this question. Instead, we have to use energy conservation, which can be represented by the following equation here. We'll notice on the left side of the equation, we have subscripts of I, which indicate initial values, and on the right side, we have subscripts of F, which indicate final values. The terms that have 1 half mv squared represent kinetic energy, and the terms that contain an mgy represent the gravitational potential energy. Before evaluating which types of energy are present initially and finally, it's useful to define this horizontal dotted line as having a height equal to zero. With that definition in mind, we could see that initially the motorcyclist would have no gravitational potential energy because he is not yet off of the line that we called ground level, essentially. So we can cancel out the initial gravitational potential energy. On the other hand, once the motorcyclist reaches his peak height, he certainly will have gravitational potential energy. So we're going to leave the gravitational potential energy in on the final side of the equation. Both initially and finally, the motorcyclist is moving. We can even see from the figure that the speeds are noted. So the kinetic energies will also remain present in the formula. So here is our simplified conservation of energy equation. We'll notice that the question is asking, what is the maximum height that the motorcyclist reaches? Well, that maximum height is represented in the diagram by H, but in the formula, it would be this term right here, this Y final. So we can solve this equation for Y final first by subtracting this 1 half MV final squared term to both sides of the equation. And of course, that will cancel it on the right side. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by mg. Notice on the left side, you have to divide the entire side by mg. So we have successfully isolated the final height of the motorcyclist. We'll notice on the left side that the term m appears in all three terms in the equation. So what that means is that we can eliminate it from the equation. It's essentially dividing out. And once we do that, we'll notice that the remaining terms are completely known. The initial speed and final speeds of the motorcyclist were given in the question. And then, of course, the value of g is 9.8. So we can plug all of the known information in to solve for yf. You'll notice that we've omitted the units for simplicity's sake, but as long as they are all in their standard form, like meters per second and meters per second squared, we should be okay. So once we crunch that down on our calculators, we should obtain a final height of about 6.94 meters, which indeed turns out to be the maximum height above that horizontal dotted line that the motorcyclist reaches. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos that are just like it. You are also welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.